Hi there, Amanda Cronin and the whole family at the Chastain Family Fan Club uh, and fans and administrators and, and all the gang. Uh, my name is Mark. Uh, I was Mark Rowe. I was <laughs> recently uh, on the show as Richard Miller uh, in the episode of Doors Opening, Doors Closing. Um, week before last, um, not a very nice person. Um, I'm bringing on my wife. Well, she plays my wife, uh, Kim Mako. She played Mary Miller. And we're going to talk a little bit and answer a few questions that uh, Amanda had uh, suggested. So I hope it's interesting to you. It was very interesting to us. We loved our experience on the show. Uh, my voice is cracking. I'm going through puberty. Um, and we couldn't uh, say enough about our wonderful experience. So I hope it's not... Um, boring or too self-indulgent um but i uh, hope you enjoy it and if you have any other questions we're happy to uh to answer those so we really appreciate you guys having this page and being such fans of the show it adds a whole nother layer of uh this experience granted you know we were only on the show one day in the one scene but we just we had so much fun so uh we're proud to be part of your group part of your family all right enjoy kim where are you Kim! <laughs> Long time no see. I know, it's so good to see you. You look great. Thank you. So do you. I like the, is that a mirror behind you? Uh, yeah, it's a, a little mirror. Uh, yeah, Very little nice. Our mirror. Uh, <laughs> great to see you. Uh, it's so nice of Amanda Cronin to uh, invite us to make a little video talking about something we love. So fun. Really is fun. Really is fun. Uh, I've really enjoyed the, the Chastain family fan club there at, uh, on Facebook. It's, it's so wonderful to have people that love the show so much. That it's they so can, cool. Yeah. I mean, you know, we got to, to spend a day there and enjoy it. Uh, so for me, I've become a fan of it. And the show. I didn't honestly didn't know it that well before I auditioned for it, but uh, now I'm hooked, and uh, it's great to just have people. Same. Like it. Yeah. Same. You know, when you just said the name of the hospital, what, when you said the name, what came to mind is the day um, that I drove there for the first time and saw the building, and it's so big, it really could be a hospital. That whole yeah. complex that you, it's that huge warehouse. Yeah. It's, it's the size of a hospital. <laughs> it is, and oh, the uh, exterior is the High Museum here. Did you, did we talk about that? Uh, we did, yes. When we first met, we talked about that. Yeah, yes. that's beautiful. That's just a few blocks from uh, from me here in Atlanta. And you are in Asheville, correct? That's right. I'm currently in Asheville. I'm in New York sometimes, but I'm mainly in Asheville right now. We both sort of did the same thing. We were in New York, and then the pandemic happened, and it kind of uh, changed our lives a bit. So you're more um, between New York and Asheville, and I'm um, New York and Atlanta uh, in L.A. You kind of have to go where the work goes right or the work sure do. yeah so tell us a little bit about you and then i'll talk about how we met and all that stuff so. okay yeah so um i started acting in new york city way back when um i went to syracuse university i graduated with a theater degree and then went to new york and did that hustle for 12 years um was part of a theater company where we did all original plays did a little bit of TV, not too much, a little bit, and some indie film. Um, and then life happened and 9-11 happened. And not exactly at that moment, but soon after 9-11, it kind of turned my world upside down. And um, I was with Chris, who's my now husband, and who was also an actor at the time. I thought I was your husband. <laughs> <laughs> You're my TV hubby. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, and we decided to leave the business. Uh, and I left acting for, should I say how many years? Because then I'm dating myself. A long time. <laughs> Just a short little. <laughs> <laughs> I left for a while. Uh, and I've only uh, rejoined that world two years ago. Wow. Um, and it's been fantastic. And so much has changed since I've come back. The whole process of auditioning has changed with the whole self-tape 
thing now, which didn't exist, you know, when I was in New York, all your auditions were in person. And because of self taping, that's why I can live in a place like Asheville and audition for shows that are shooting in Atlanta. Yeah. It's... That's what makes it possible. So the technology was a huge part in me making the decision to return. And I feel so grateful that I can. Well, you, you belong in this business and I'm so glad that you're back in it. And I'm oh, so honored thanks. to have been on your return project. That yeah, was... it's, I'm so glad that we got to meet on this. It's been so great. Really, really great. Tell us a little bit about you. Well, I, I, I think our journeys are similar. You know, I started acting when I was young and through school and um, college. I majored in, in theater and performance and uh, summer, did summer stock and, and moved to New York for, gosh, t 10 years. Kind of got out of the business. Uh, you know, in my 30s, I was like, okay, it didn't happen. I'm not on Broadway. Uh, and I had a, a fallback uh, career in uh, design, in uh, art direction and graphic design. So I thought, let me make some money for a change. So I, I did that and I loved it. So I, I really kind of got whisked off into that world of uh, ad agencies and all of that. Um, and I was living, I, uh, it had sort of taken me to Los Angeles in the art world. And um, I, I just thought, you know what, I, I miss this. I miss the actor never leaves like the actor inside you as much as you try to say okay that's over and a producer friend called me i was working in an ad agency he's like this was in 2012 maybe um he's like i need you to come to a callback you're in the screen actors guild right and i said yeah but i i kind of stopped doing all that and he goes i really need your type unloading this beer wagon for a commercial just come to the callback so I went, and of course, as it always happens, because I didn't really care, I booked it, and it was a Budweiser Super Bowl commercial. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, yeah. So I, and I thought, oh, I, I did it. That was great. I had fun. Uh, and um, then the residual checks started coming in, and then I had to rethink everything. I go, why am I not doing commercials? <laughs> why am I working in an ad agency? So it, it, I said it was my favorite midlife crisis. I started doing more commercials in LA and my agent started submitting me for film and television. And then I started booking um, shows. I think Ray Donovan was the first thing that uh, I had booked. And it was- I love a, that show. It was, oh, it's, it was so much fun. But, um, and it just made me think, okay, you know what? Life is short. I need, to, I need to get back into this. And so I jumped in with both feet about five years ago and uh, haven't looked back, moved to Atlanta because there's so much work and then moved to New York and then now back, may end up back in LA at some point, but um, I've never been happier. Nothing is as gratifying as, as, Same. as being there and just, you just, I think when you work, you're on set, you're just like, I want to feel this every day, you know? Yeah, I mean, because it is fun to watch the work, but for me, the best part is doing the work, the day on set, that mm -hmm. nothing tops that for me. The actual doing of it is the absolute best. It's worth the hundreds and hundreds of no's, isn't it? It that is. We, because people don't realize, I have friends that uh, that say, you know, uh, did you have to audition for that? You know, if it's a really small role, I had a- uh, It's like, yeah, against hundreds you, and thousands, thousands of people. Of, people don't realize thousands of people between the submissions of the agents and then the narrowing down and now a self tape market, you have hundreds of tapes that they look through, they watch a few seconds, they're like, no, 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 they come back. You don't, they don't realize how many people you have to beat out for each role. And there are times I think, how the heck did I get this over, you know, it's always Same. what roles you don't think that you're gonna get that you do. And the ones you're like, this is me. And you're like, oh, I'm sorry. It's not, yeah. <laughs> it's not, it's not your role, uh, which is I think the most, um, self-preservation uh, tool that you can have is to learn how to deal with all of that. It's yeah. in, in having the, the um, skills on set and being able to do it and do it and do it is one thing, but um, the day-to-day, -day, the nose and all of that, you just have to really learn how to manage. Uh, so Absolutely. That, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's interesting. Um, I will play our scene and then we'll talk more. Are you okay? Honey, we're here now. I'm fine. Uh, Mom and Dad, uh, this, this is Dr. Bell. 
well. Uh, he, he saved my life. Your daughter's a real fighter. We can't thank you enough. Who are these men? They are the adoptive fathers. I'm sorry? Sorry, but we can't let you have this baby. Dad, please. Jake and Greg have been with me through everything. Prenatal visits, ultrasounds. They already named her. You two seem like nice men. It's not personal, but we don't agree with the lifestyle you've chosen. We haven't chosen anything. This is who we are. Just like your daughter is who she was born to be. And she's perfect. Our daughter obviously has different values than we do, and we hope that that will change when she grows up and matures a little bit. In our family, we believe in traditional values and structure. She will have to accept that if she wants to continue to being a part of it. So if I give them the baby, it really will kick me out of our family. Well, there we go. I love that Dr. Bell. Oh my gosh, what an impassioned speech that we totally ignore. I know, we totally ignore it. We're terrible parents. It's terrible, <laughs> terrible. Well, we think we're good parents, right? We do, we think we're good parents. And that's something that we discussed when we met is that it can be you know, so interesting to play someone that's you know, really different from who you are. Mm -hmm. And also how the writing is so good that, you know, they're not just flat out bad guys. You feel for the parents because they love their daughter and their daughter obviously loves them. Mm -hmm. And it's complicated. Yeah, it is. It's so complicated, especially because there's no uh, sort of happy ending to it. Like you yeah. think, oh, well, they're going to learn their lesson. Dr. Bell, he makes some great points. And I can't wait for the next scene to come back and everything be tied up with a bow. A little right? bit. And that's though. not how life is. It's not how life is. It's not how life is. I want to talk about the audition process. Mm -hmm. So for me, the for people who, who don't know, um, so we our agent submits us for a role. And if the casting director thinks we might be a good fit, then we get an appointment. And our agent sends us that appointment. And the appointment consists of the details of the show, the character, the dates, director, really all the producers, all of that, uh, and also what are called the sides, which are the, the scene, the script. So uh, I received that, or actually uh, taped myself tape out of Tennessee. I was uh, in Knoxville at the time um, on January 24th. It was at uh, around the, the same time for you, I guess. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I had, uh, they sent it back to me and I said, oh, I, I've already auditioned for this. And they said, no, 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 they, they want, um, you have to realize how much you love your daughter. I think in my first audition, I was a little too stern. This is Jake and Greg. They already love this baby more than anything. If what you really care about is her well-being, you'll let this baby go home with her father's. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So they said, make sure we see that warmth and love, even though you're doing something tough love, we still need to see. 
Tina has to accept that if she wants to continue being part of it. So if I give the baby up to them, you really will keep me out of our family? That's funny. I don't know if I told you this, but I sent it back immediately. I love a callback because in our self-tape world now, rarely do you get any direction or redirection or, yeah, you were this, but you were that. So when you get a, a callback, it's thrilling because you're like, oh good, I get to show you that I can do something different, you know? Sure. Um, and so I I sent it back like an hour after I got it. And it wasn't, oh, yeah. due, it wasn't due for like four days. And then four days came up and my agent goes, uh, Mark Casting's wondering why you haven't sent in your tape. And I go, what? I go, I sent it in that day, that uh, day. And they go, they somehow don't have it. And I was like, oh my gosh. So I, did I tell you that story? You did, but I had forgotten. Oh, oh my gosh. A nightmare. That makes my heart want to My just heart, because I, I really love the role. And I thought, oh my gosh, I could have not gotten this role thinking, well, they went with someone else. And then, then luckily the Finn Cannons came back and said, we don't have his tape. Uh, don't know why that my agent said that's not like mark at all so thank god there was a follow-up and thank god we're you know it all worked out but it's so funny how sometimes yes thank know, god. Oh god we wouldn't even be here talking we right wouldn't now. even be talking i wouldn't even know you that would be heartbreaking <laughs> so you were the amazing one to reach out to me uh early on and say do you mind if we get together before <laughs> Yeah, well, so I got to the hotel and, you know, I was, and we knew, we knew that we we're going to be shooting on one day, but there was going to be a week of waiting. And I thought, wouldn't it be great if I could find the actor who's playing my husband and connect, maybe we could even run lines or just, you know, otherwise you just show up to set on the day and have to be married. And I thought, well, we have this time and we've both been COVID tested. So if we are socially distanced and wear a mask, wouldn't it be great if we could connect beforehand? It would just help the work, make mm -hmm. us more comfortable. Like what could be bad about that? And um, as the paperwork was coming through, we kept getting the cast list with the rewrites, but our names weren't on it for several days. It kept saying, um, the Millers TBD, even though we were there, they just hadn't changed it. So a couple of days went by and finally our names were on there and I saw your name, Mark Rowe. So I went straight to Facebook. <laughs> I <love> Facebook too. <laughs> and I put in Mark Rowe and uh, kind of just took a guess on who, you know, out of the Mark Rowe's who it might be. And when I pressed on your picture, I saw that we had a mutual friend who's an actor and I thought that's gotta be him. It's gotta be. Um, and so I sent you a Facebook messenger note just saying, hi, I'm Kim. I'm playing your wife. And I forget exactly what I said, but something like, I thought maybe we could grab a cup of coffee or something before we go to set just to meet. And you were so nice. I remember, cause you never know how people are going to be. Well, amen. Like, I, I think the fact that uh, when you called me, I'm like, oh my gosh, thank God she's on the same page. Because what do you have to lose? Yeah. By meeting and, and getting, a, you know, establishing a connection, hopefully that comes through. And you couldn't have been sweeter. And our mutual friend, Jen Peterman, you know, any friend of hers is a friend of mine. But she Same. said, we, I think we uh, had such a great time uh, for lunch. We decided to do it again before we had... Uh, we did. Yeah, we got together twice. Yeah, it was great. I, I, and once was Valentine's Day. And I actually, uh, I don't know if I, I don't think I told you this, but I stopped <laughs> at Publix and got some chocolates and thought, oh, I'll give her chocolates. And I felt so weird about it that I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this is be a little creepy, you know, like if she knew me better, it'd be like, okay, but like, okay. Put it down That's there. hilarious. Calm down, like, husband. Don't give me chocolates. I calm down. Okay. I get it. We're connecting. I get it. I get it. Right, right. Don't We're married. Down. Okay. Yeah, we get it. We get it. So I ate them. So it was, That is so it was, sweet. It was when <laughs> like I get a little carried away. But um, but anyway, so then, uh, yeah, so then the 16th uh, was our shoot. And it was so much fun. Was it? Oh, not? it was so great. Yeah. So, so for those of you who may not know, you know, you get there and you go directly to what they call base camp, which is where 
Um, you have your own little trailer space and your costume is hanging in there. And for me, I had my uh, a tray of jewelry um, and they let me pick my own stuff. You know, they had, a, I think, three different sets of stuff and I just was to pick one set. Um, you can wear them all. <laughs> and I put it all on, right? Five necklaces. This is my character. <laughs> Yeah, and we uh, hung out at base camp, and then we went and got our hair and makeup done. And that uh, the hair hair guy, he spent so much time on my hair. I don't know if you can tell in the scene how my hair is like this stiff. I was telling a friend, it's not, can I talk to the managers? I've already spoken to the manager here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had some good Karen hair. Yeah, so, good. so good. I love, I think, costume hair and makeup uh really completes that it's just the, the the finishing touch to the way you feel about a character absolutely and they were they were all great people too so this, great yeah so great um, great group of people yeah i i have a picture of me looking at the shirt that i was wearing and it was hysterical because it was just basically <laughs> the same shirt i was wearing in a different color so i love when you know your type and you uh you know you get to wear those clothes but uh yeah. Yeah, so, so the audition process, um, I thought I would show our auditions to people who haven't really seen how this whole process works. Fun. So, um, so tell me about the challenge or, or your experience um, when you got the audition and your, your process of, of taping and all that good stuff. So I guess um, maybe the, the biggest obvious uh, challenge is that you know, when we get these auditions, and these were, you know, two small scenes, you don't get the whole script. So you have no idea what the full context is. Um, you know, is there more to who this daughter is? I wasn't sure um, how old the daughter was based on the scenes that we got. I wasn't sure if she was 15. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't know if she was a teenager at home, you know, it didn't say any of that. So you kind of just have to make up your own, what you think it might be and just commit to that choice and go with it. So that is always a challenge, not having the full picture of this full story. Um, and then, uh, personally, because the character was so different than myself, to try to bring to life a real, you know, loving, caring human being that I personally don't agree with at all, and 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 you know somehow make that relatable mm -hmm. um, to an audience. I guess that's that's the challenge. Yeah, and the fun and the joy. Yeah, it's well, it's fun playing characters that are not so similar to ourselves, you know. Um, for me, I it was something that I was really, really hoping to book just because it was uh so different, and these stories need to be told. I mean, it's heartbreaking when a, a couple wants to adopt a child so much and they've planned so much of their life and they've spent so much money already. and. And then someone says, no, sorry. You know, and they have the power to say, no, sorry. You know, I have, I have friends that um, can't see their partner in a hospital. I think things are changing now, the laws. But, you know, we're living in a very interesting time where things are evolving, thank God. Um, and those stories need to be told. You know, when, when my mom saw this episode, she said, well, I wanted, I wanted the result. I wanted them to come around. And I said, we all did, mom. In real life, we want them to come around. But how great that this this show is telling it like it is, and it it's heartbreaking. Yeah, well, it also is heartbreaking that you know obviously we're all heartbroken for the couple that's not going to get the baby, but it's also so heartbreaking for the daughter because mm -hmm. it's her baby, and in her mind, she's had this plan. She feels safe that she's going to be able mm -hmm. to give her child over to these loving people, and now she doesn't know where her baby's going. Yeah, that's, that's another whole part of it. Exactly. And exactly. she's still got to deal with her parents. Mm -hmm. Well, and the ultimatum, I mean, for parents, and I've, I've seen it and heard it so many times where parents are just like, this is, this is it. You know, she's like, will you really kick me out? And he's like, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, so it's heartbreaking all around. And now also knowing more about <clears throat> the context of The Resonant as a show and knowing the relationship between uh, Conrad Ricamora's character and Dr. Bell, mm -hmm. that made Dr. Bell's monologue all that more mm -hmm. poignant, yeah. understanding their relationship. Mm -hmm. I think so. it, was, it was speaking on such a, a higher level, right? And, yeah. And to your point, it, when you're auditioning for something, you don't know any of that, you know? Right. You don't even know, we didn't even get his speech. We yeah. all got a, the tail end of it in the script. So then you, when you um, see it on set for the first time, it's um, it's moving. It's it's hard not to be moved. But, you know, you really have to be firm in your character's thoughts, um, as opposed to being emotionally affected by <laughs> the truth of how you might be, re relate or uh, react to. Like, no, sorry, you know. And and I, the whole time I was just like, I've heard all this before. You say it's not a choice, but it's a choice. You know, that was trying to keep my mind. <laughs> in that realm but uh yeah. yeah it's um it's it's pretty interesting um so i thought i would show um a clip of our auditions and um people can kind of see what the before uh happens how it looks um so we'll start with yours sounds great you okay? Uh, Honey, we're here now. Mom, Dad, I'm fine. This is Dr. Bell. He saved my life. Your daughter's a fighter. <laughs> we can't. Well, we can't thank you enough. Who are these, uh, who are these men? They're the adoptive fathers. I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry. But we can't let you have this baby. Dad, please. Jake and Greg have been with me through it all. Prenatal visits, ultrasound. They've already named her. You two seem like nice men. It's not personal, but we don't agree with the lifestyle you've chosen. We didn't choose anything. This is who we are. Just like your daughter is who she was born to be, and she's perfect. Our daughter obviously has different values than we do. We hope that that will change when she grows up and matures a little. In our family, we believe in traditional values and structure. Tina has to accept that if she wants to continue being part of it. True family values are about unconditional love and a stable home and putting children first. That's Jake and Greg. They already love this baby more than anything. If you want to really care about his, her well-being, then you'll let this baby go home with their fathers. Awesome. Like, I see why you got it. <laughs> Truly. I mean, you know, I, I say... A note the other day you're just your eyes are heartbreaking you know it's I can see so much of um, the complexity and the conflict that that you have thank you that's really nice of you to say but speaking of the eyes I have to add that um, you know I in large part why I got this role is because I look like Tina um, she, of course, was cast first because she has the bigger role. She's the guest star. Mm -hmm. um, and so they were casting her parents, they're casting the parents around who they, they right. were going to cast as the girl. And um, I was astonished, actually, how much she and I look alike. You both have Bambi eyes. That's true. <laughs> we look a lot alike. I mean, she could yeah. hands down be my kid. Yeah, yeah. So I had that going for me. So I feel really fortunate. I will say that I think you're putting too much credit on that. Your performance, I would say, is what got you the role. And it just so happened that you looked like her. So very nice of you. Leave that. We will leave that there. Um, but they, they took such precautions. There were times they would say, um, when they said cut, they would come by with a tray with our mask. I'm not you know, telling you, you know, just sort of telling the audience. Um, when we put those back on. Uh, and they would fumigate the set, and that would happen periodically. Um, 
and my favorite thing is we were in a corridor waiting to go on and we would hold hands and just, and we had to keep our energy up because we were running through a hospital. Right. We didn't want to come in, you know, any lower than we should be. Uh, but just standing there holding hands and sort of bouncing up and down, waiting for them to cue us to go. Run it. Um, yeah, I love that. And, and sometimes it's so much of what people, the audience, they don't see about how giving an actor is and how wonderful they are to have, you know, someone like you that you just, you don't think twice about that. And that really helps a lot. It calms you down. You feel that connection and um, it becomes innate in that. Well, so thank yeah, you. I mean, I, I've just was so relieved when I met you because same, you just, you made me feel so comfortable immediately and you were just so open hearted. As soon as the moment I reached out to you, you reached right back mm -hmm. and, um, that just felt so good and nice. And I really believe really helps the work. I think so too. I mean, we're, we're humans. Like it's, it's amazing when actors don't realize that I, I had a, an acting teacher once say, why do we have to beg you to connect? You know, like sometimes you come into an audition and you're supposed to be friends and you're not talking until, you know, we say, and it's like, hey, start talking, start, we, we wake up in the, every human wakes up in the morning to connect. And when we watch te television, it's all about connection, you know? And, and it, we had noted afterwards that when we would take breaks uh, that uh, Christopher and Conrad, uh, the couple really didn't talk to us a lot. Like they, it was almost like we were the the bad guys. Right, and, right. And we you know, um, maybe they needed to do that for their for their work. I, and and I think that's I think it's important. I'm kind of glad there was that dynamic. Yeah. You know. Um, on the other hand, Bruce Greenwood could not have been warmer. Tell them the story about uh, that. <laughs> so uh, my aunt is a huge fan of the show. Um, and of Bruce Greenwood. And um, so after we had been there for a couple hours and I felt comfortable enough, you know, I, meh, meh, meh. <laughs> Mr. Greenwood, um, <laughs> I, I just said, you know, I just have to tell you that my aunt is a huge fan of yours and she's a huge fan of the show. She's been watching from the beginning and he did not skip a beat. He was like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Well, let's FaceTime her. I mean, he said it immediately. Well, you know what was amazing? He wasn't just gratuitous, like, let me be sweet and offer. Like, there was a, like, a, maybe your phone wasn't, or something, he's like, well, let's get one that worked. Like, he was going out of his way. Right. I have an Android, so I can't do so, FaceTime. Yeah, and so like, he, was doing, he was doing everything he could to make it happen so that we could FaceTime my aunt. And he okay. did, and, and, you know, to his credit, not yes obviously he's a really nice man but i think he really cares about the fans mm -hmm. he really does i mean i could just tell that right away yeah and um so we facetimed her and it was hilarious and you know she was so surprised of course and you know she couldn't stop talking about it afterwards but it was just so sweet and generous of him to do i mean he did not have to do no. that no he had um, a, you know, he had a lot to do i'm sure he had a lot on his mind, but but to be able to be so generous to say yes, you yeah. know, that's so great. And he offered it. I mean, I didn't ask him to no, do that. No, you no, know? he, he went above and beyond, which is so- It was incredible. Uh, really was, really yeah. was. It's, it's so great the people you meet uh, working on these things. And, um, you know, we didn't really didn't get to talk with Maddie Nichols, our daughter. Uh, we really didn't talk. Am I? She was, she was really, she was working on, she was working a lot exactly. while we were there on set. She was kind of off on her own, really working on her scenes. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't want to. Right. But have, am I correct in remembering like we really didn't even speak to her on a personal level until after even maybe rehearsal, maybe yeah. we shot but it. Part of that was because. Um, unlike the rest of us, technically, she was so tied down in that bed and they had to hook her up to so many things. So she just required more setup than the rest of us were all walking in and out of that room. And she, you know, every time she had to get up, they had to take everything off. And I think it was just more laborious, you know. Yeah. So. By the way, she was heartbreaking and wonderful. And she was great. So great. So great. I remember... 
And the so day young, of. young, so, so young and so young and so good. And I remember saying to you, it's just like, oh my gosh, our daughter is. <laughs> our daughter, our daughter's so talented. <laughs> Honey, we did it. We did it. We did it. <laughs> um, just uh, how how sweet and frail and beautiful and heartbreaking. Yeah, she, she, was, it. she was great. Um, so I thought it would be interesting to talk um, about some of the comments from that episode. Uh, okay, good. And uh, see what people have to say. I'll read a couple of them to you because you probably haven't seen them. So, uh, or maybe you have. The, I haven't uh, seen the, them yet. This post uh, was by uh, Jeanette Hudson. And as she asked, she goes, were you upset that the mother changed her mind on giving her baby to Jake and his husband? And I, I first off, appreciate that all the blame is on you. <laughs> <laughs> the, the mother changed her mind. I had nothing to do with it. You she are, knows who rules that family. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, so um, I, love, I love the comments. Um, my gosh, I also love the fact that I can't see without my glasses. Uh, so uh, Jennifer Douglas says, uh, I love how the parents said it wasn't personal. Damn straight it's personal. True, you know. Yeah. That whole, right on, Jennifer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Angela Early says 100% wrong what happened. Um, let's see. Uh, I think it's so fun that people comment. Yeah, it's so cool that people are invested, yeah. you know, and, and have, um, uh, Jill Chia Verone says, Ugh, I wanted to punch that girl's parents in their faces so badly. Jake and his, his husband's, or his uh, husband's, Jake and his husband were the ones who were there through the whole process, uh, every appointment, everything. They were so excited. They held that baby girl. It was them that had the name picked out for her only to have her ripped away from them before they could even adopt her and all because they were two gay men and therefore not a traditional family. That was so messed up. It's true. I know. It's oh, so heartbreaking. So it is. It is. Oh, those oh. Millers. Gosh, they're terrible. Hopefully gosh, those they Millers. Learned. Hopefully they learned. Uh, <laughs> um, let's see. Brenda Kernan says, oh my goodness, I just wanted to cry. I was so upset with those parents. I wanted to scream heartbroken so mission accomplished you know the show uh was um set out to do what it wanted to do what was aimed to do uh, hard choices hard yeah. choices yeah yeah and um, think about how hard that choice was for that daughter she had to make that choice mm -hmm. after everything she had been through with the couple about willing to take her baby, her feeling so good about it, she had to go back on her on that choice and yeah. change it. Well, I mean, she didn't have to, but that's what she decided to do. Yeah, um, you lose and, your whole, you know, family who obviously are you're very close to. What a what a terrible threat, you know. So, uh, um, God know. is love, but I'm only allowed to show love in my own way. It's, right. Yeah, and you just think, gosh. These gay parents work so hard. You think about how many children are born into situations where they were maybe unexpected or they just aren't prepared to have a life, you know, a, a new life and a baby. And then you've got gay parents who are doing everything. You know, they're working so hard to, to be good parents and to provide and to, and it's just, it's, just a travesty to think that they um someone else can say nope sorry I'm not gonna right. not gonna get that opportunity um so but they do it is heartbreaking and it's all our fault <laughs> it is all our fault <laughs> yeah yeah so it was fun um yeah i do wish we would have come around but you were so good too hard. i mean just uh -huh. yeah we're just with you the whole way you know and you, you kind of like quiver a little bit when the daughter says, so you mean you're really going to kick me, kick me out of the family and they cut to your face and just like your mustache is just like a, the tiniest little quiver of just, cause you're so torn. I just think you did, you did that so well. Uh, well, I appreciate it. I, I, it's the dynamic in the writing. It's, you kind of don't have to do much, you know, you just have to 
go on the journey, you know. Um, I love there's a, a focus pull where uh, they catch your face and it, it comes into focus there and your eyes are just heartbreaking. Like, I don't know, um, I think the, the casting is brilliant because you can be such a um, terrible person, but there's, you're heartbreaking as well. You know, there's a compassion uh, in your performance that I think is Thank uh, you. beautiful. So um, yeah, we could obviously talk for hours. I love it so much. Uh, they, um, the Chastain Family Fan Club would, uh, has invited us to do a podcast as well. So we can tell some of these stories um, and all on that. But um, I guess maybe wrapping it up would be in line. You're like, I really didn't know we were going to spend the whole day talking about this. <laughs> I could talk to you all day. Oh, I love it. Me too. Me too. <laughs> I hope that we get to play husband and wife or brother and sister or something on some other show someday because you oh that would be the client. biggest joy i would I, love that well maybe we should just write something and that we way, could do that too yeah i love it let's be nice people though this time yes <laughs> giving we will be giving of love yes. <laughs> all right well speaking of love i adore you and love you and i'm so glad we got to work on this together and meet i You're love you too all right Mwah. have a wonderful day all the best to you i want to hear Great, great things. Sames. All right. Have Same a great one. Thanks for being a part of this. <laughs>